I was born a slave and a dog. What Clay was teaching me was kind of like what religion taught me. Long to my mom. There are ways to do it right and wrong. Long to Jesus, I don't. Long to y'all. Maybe in some ways that's why I returned to Clay. My name is Dave. My name is Dave. My name goes here. My name goes there. My name is Dave. My name's Theaster Gates. I'm an artist. I live in Chicago. I am comfortable saying that when I approach a project, I'm coming with all of my politics. And sometimes those are aesthetic politics, sometimes they're social politics. Maybe all the time, they're all of that. Theaster Gates is known for his installations, his performances, and his urban interventions that transform space and perceptions. I'm doing a project at Locust Projects. The project's called Soul Manufacturing Corporation. When he proposed Soul Manufacturing Corporation to Locust Projects, we knew it would be a great fit because we have always, from day one, been about giving artists the opportunity to pursue ambitious ideas and being a space for the community to really experience art. I wanted to spend the next months working with a team thinking about the process, the process of thing-making. For Soul Manufacturing Corporation right now, the abstract theory is that the energy of making is important. What the thing is today doesn't matter. There's a way that, as a result of being productive, things happen. For me, it's like a coming home. It's a way of thinking about how important the hand is, how it's as important as the conceptual, the rigorous, the attributes of, of making skill, how it's unfortunate that, that that thing doesn't have play anymore. With Soul Manufacturing Corporation, sometimes the way that I want to prove the work is by doing the work. So it's like, well, I just hired some guys, and then they told me that they had some friends, so I hired them too. For this exhibition, the Astor invited three skilled makers to participate in the gallery exhibition on a daily basis. Uh, two of them came to us from Chicago and one from Japan. The skilled makers actually spent over almost two months in Miami and really became part of the community. In some ways, Pei, Matthew, and Yoko, I feel like I have to ask them every day, are you okay? Are you having fun? Does this seem worthwhile? And there are some days that it seems worthwhile, and then there are other days that are hard days. But I think in that, I am looking for these moments where the opportunity feels like a generous opportunity. This is how I think about art, but it's also how I think about social change. It's like, um, I don't know if I can solve anyone else's problem but my own. So my problem is I want to make a lot of pots because I like making pots. I want there to be a pottery in my neighborhood, or I want there to be lots of different kind of hand industries, right? And in order to do that, I need help. And so in some ways, it's still emerging. You know, What we're clear about is we have a couple tons of clay. We have some um, really beautiful um, things that were made that support the production of other things. I was always a bad potter who had lots of emotion for the material. It, it just seduced me. It gave me a discipline. It gave me the sense that there are moments where things are done wrong. If you make this thing and the weight is here and not there, it ain't gonna feel right. And if you trim with this tool and not that, you're gonna go through your foot. And all of that disciplinary learning has been valuable. If I could uh, put clay alongside all these other things, that I realized that clay was in fact a metaphor in meaning. It was kind of deepening an understanding of how the material world worked. And that could give me advice in all these other aspects of my life. One of the reasons that clay was so important to me was because it was a relatively uh, affordable material. I thought, man, if, if I can learn to make this, then I could be an extremely generous uh, brother. I could, that, that it, it would both satisfy my desire 
for meaning and making, uh, while at the same time it has the ability to be generous, you know, that, that it's constantly producing. And I think maybe in some ways that's why I return to clay, because I think the earth is generous in that way. And it's like, wow, you know, the earth is waiting to create these containers of generosity. With Soul Manufacturing Corporations, people will make, will do yoga with the makers, will play music for the makers, will make drawings. I definitely connected with the concept of um, people performing for people working in factories and, and speaking to some friends of mine that are from Cuba, they still do that stuff. There's like groups of workers, uh, they'll have somebody there reading to them throughout the day and things like that. So to me, that was very interesting. We had to ask the team, like, what do you want to hear? And I'm excited that this DJ is just going to spin in the spirit of DJ, you know, he'll be another maker. And that might make the workday move more fastly. They've invited me in as the yoga instructor and I really just love being a part of this art installation because I think it brings the community into the space in, in a whole new way. It forces you to think of the process in a different way because it's just beyond these walls. To me, I see him as this like ultimate connector who loves people and loves to bring people together and have them meet each other and have things be created but also have the artist be taken care of. Um, this project isn't really just about Locust Projects. It's about the possibility of production in a real place. It's about like um, what else might happen once the show goes away and how can I leverage the resource that was made available through Locust Projects, through the galleries, through, through um, the attention that'll come from this thing to actually do another kind of work that has impact and affect outside of this. And when it leaves Locust Project, um, I hope that Soul Manufacturing Corporation will go somewhere else, make more things, create more energy, create new job opportunities, create a, a model by which people could look through the lens of a gallery and imagine a thing that lives outside of the gallery in the storefront next door. By the time the show leaves and moves to Philadelphia for its second rendition at Fabric Workshop, all of the things produced here will go with it. And then uh, during the summer, a new version of the project will exist at Whitechapel Gallery in London. Outside of this project and into my larger practice, this is a moment when um, the best thing that I can do is to, to share the love. Mm-hmm.